welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Maze Treatments, where we drink Jack Daniels. Okay, not all of us. Will's a minor. Sammy. Is this what this? Uh, is this how I start my video? Sammy, where you been, buddy? Um, to hell and back. To hell and back. I've been. Literally. Welcome back to Maze Treatments, by the way. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, is my comeback. I will wear the hat. Wear the hat. Let them let them represent. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Back to the. Back to the back. By the way, this is the first video Sammy and Will have been in, uh, and, and they're no strangers to each other. That's an obvious one right there, man. We're no strangers to love. Yeah, there you go. The rules. <laughs> so do I. All right. Let's hope we don't get, let's hope we don't get a copyright. No, okay, it's got to be more than 10 seconds. We'll be all right. Uh, we're not – I remember TLV got that during a live stream. That sucks for them. That was that was bad. Anyway, did they? Yeah, they did. I didn't they, know that. they they uh, they were singing a song and they got copywritten after that. That was hilarious. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's not what we're talking but, uh, about today. We we're are here for maze treatments. Maze treatments. The final round or the final oh, the final, final battle, battle of battle round, of round one. one. I'm killing ants. I'm sorry. Ants are pissing me off. Bro, final... kill your ants and I'll take this in, bro. Don't worry about it. Go for it. Take it. This is all you, Sammy. Go for it. All right. So today we got the pleasure of watching Mr. Chris from Zombie Chris. And he'll be going against his fellow podcast member, Connor, from Connor, Florida. Connor, Florida, <laughs> man. FL. That's right. Connor, FL. It's about to be lit. I know that we had told you guys previously that there was going to be a buy in the next round, but the stars didn't align. Yeah. Um, uh, and so we had to make me... some changes yeah, right. Go throughout this process. You know what it is. You know so, um, going. going. So, uh, this is now going to be, if you looked at our original. The original bracket you were like wait why does this doesn't make sense why are they going against each other well some things happened um we bought a drop out and uh now this is the round one um and the winner will go on to the next round and who will they be facing tony they will be facing uh the winner of this round will go on to face tlev's Josue, the only remaining rem member of tlev still left in this so there's there's a big there's a big pressure on the shoulders of tlev if they want to take this home the people who really inspired this whole treatment, this whole thing. So after this, we're going to take a uh, uh, about a two-week break. We're going to come back um, and uh, get ready for round two. Uh, I'm, I'm having everybody, uh, you know, I'm giving them more time to come up with their round two picks because they got to create a whole new treatment for us. And if we know Jonathan, I, you know, I gave him a week, and he's like, yeah, I can't do that. So I was like, all right, I'll give you two weeks because I know the kind of shit that you bring to the table, man. That that Matrix maze just blew me away. I think it blew all of us away. Well, let's let's just get to the video here. Let's let's roll the uh, Chris's video. Let's do it. So this is Zombie Chris's video. He's doing Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. Let's check out what Chris has to bring to the table today. What is up, everybody? Hello and welcome. No, I'm not doing that video. <laughs> but thank you to Knights of Horror for inviting me to be a contestant on their season one of the maze treatments. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about my opponents. Um, uh, my pick is an interesting pick because if you think about what has transferred to Halloween Horror Nights in the past maybe two or three years, uh, properties that you never thought you would have saw them do, they ended up doing and doing them very well and finding that there's a new popularity. And I'm talking about something like Creepshow or Killer Clowns from Outer Space. So my pick is a 1995, I believe it is, cult classic movie. I call this one Demon Knight. Now, if you've never seen this movie, I'm going to spoil it by talking about some of the scenes and things. So the facade, what I was thinking is you do the actual hotel that is featured in the movie. Um, that is basically the main setting of this movie. It's the main setting of the house. So I think that should be the first thing that you walk up. It's a really cool facade. Maybe they can do some kind of projection mapping or some kind of lightning effects. Uh, it's going to be playing Hey Man, Nice Shot. You're going to see the car that was featured in the opening credits of the movie. Uh, basically, our hero character has, you know, you know, basically gone to the hotel. 
Um, and that is where the collector shows up to try to, you know, get back what is his. So the first room you're going to walk into in the middle of the conversation between the collector, the police, the bumbling police, they suspect something's a little odd here and bam, you have a really cool death scene, which... So the transition rooms, it's going to be like you're going through the hotel uh, and that is an easy setting they can do over and over, but it can also be different because like I said, every time he possesses someone, it's a different sort of layout. It's a different dream sequence that you can have going on. So there you go. Money shot room is where the collector uh, possesses uh, the female Jenna Pickett Smith of uh, I forget her name, but she's played by Jetta Pickett Smith and she's walking down this sort of corridor, uh, open room situation. And it's kind of creepy. And on the end of the hallway, there's sort of, you could do a scrim effect where you have the demon sort of doing like this, you know, they're, they're like touching the thing. And then the scrim will sort of do like this drop effect. And you have on the wall, it's a bunch of the demons that are tearing apart this body. There's your money shot room. That would be awesome to see. Uh, it really creepy. And then you can maybe have like a demon come from the side and scare you to push you going into the next room. Uh, the final room or one of the characters are going to mention about the mines that they actually have. But you're going to figure halfway through these mines that the demons are in the mines as well. So you're going to be in these pitch dark mines. Uh, very little lighting, but then these demons have these glowing eyes and this weird green blood effect and they're going to just be popping out of the darkness, scaring you with their glowing eyes and stuff. So that is sort of a lead up to the final room where you have that, but then you have the final room is the uh, the collector versus the Jada Pickett Smith character and how she spits this blood, this sacred blood upon him. And you see sort of like his burnt face and his real sort of demon under looking face. And he's the one that's going to be popping out of the shadows because he's trying to get us for the last time uh, before he obviously ultimately dies. And that is your last scare is going to be the you can either switch it to be the new collector who is the black collector character at the end of the movie. Or you could switch it to be that is Billy Zane or the collectors uh, the previous the collector. I know it's confusing. Uh, Billy Zane's character could come back for one final scare or it could be a demon. You can always switch it around and rotate it. Uh, the scare actor Twitter password handle it could just be it could be multiple characters it could be billy zane's character it could be the uh, the the hero i forget his name the the hero collector um it could be him it could be jenna pickett smith so you have different characters you can just have be out there and it could be a password of condemned this property is hereby condemned um, this movie is jam packed with so many different possessions and so many different like inside jokes. And then you got Billy Zane character who's sort of like Beetlejuice. So he can kind of do some comedy aspect in there as well with the gore and the demons. And so that would be really cool to see in person. Um, yeah, Tales from the Crypt, Demon's Night. And uh, take a look at this trailer and tell me what you guys think. Um, that is it. Adios. Thank you for the uh, chance to be in this competition. And good luck to everybody else involved. All right. This property is hereby condemned. zombie chris's uh maze treatment for tales of the crypt demon knight uh, a movie i've never seen but now i really want to see um it's got a lot of evil dead 
looking vibes to it mixed with like com I don't know. Evil Dead mixed with Beetlejuice, it looks like, to my extent. Right. Um, what are you guys' thoughts? I think that was a really solid uh, choice of property there. I think that movie is, like, from what I've seen, again, I haven't seen it either, but uh, a lot of the special effects, like, you know, the dude getting punched through the face and whatnot is just, like, almost perfect for, like, a setup for a good wa- scare with some water effects. And uh, I think his choice of, like, money shot and, like, having that crazy cool effect that, you know, what I just said, the punch into the face at the very opening just sounds killer to me. I think he did a really good job, and his trailer looked fucking great. And, uh, yeah. What about you, Sam? Yeah, definitely. I I think this is a really interesting choice. Um, I think, um, like Chris had mentioned, I think it's always good to be playing into these, like, um, you know, films that maybe people don't know about, so bringing them to the surface, where they got that cult following. So it's obviously a good thing for Universal because they get to really put on these really cool um, mazes and IPs, and a really cool thing for the film because they can expand their following. As you know, Universal does have a pretty big following when it comes to Horror Nights on right. both coasts. Um, I think I would say that as his treatment m- got moved on it got stronger and stronger. Like that first room was pretty sick. The money shot room was sick and the ending was sick. And then like the idea of like a rotating final scare, depending like on who was available. Um, that was cool. And then the idea of kind of like rotating also on the, the Twitter password was cool. Um, but my, my only, my only thing was it was kind of short um, in terms of like what we can expect um, in terms of the maze. I think, was him only giving us about like four rooms, I think, if I count correctly. Right. Um, it was, uh, I kind of wanted a little bit more. Like, if you would give me two more rooms, I really felt like they were good because each of his rooms looked pretty sick. You know what I mean? Like, with the punch, the whole like demon thing, going out and going through the little tunnel things, um, and that. And um, I just think you know it could also play because he mentioned there's a large amount of quotes and stuff and comedy with it. So I think they could have he could have maybe used one or two rooms to not just be for scares, but kind of play towards that comedy and make those who are really big fans of the film really happy. Because I think that's what made last year with Ghostbusters and Killer Clown so special to people is that they did play into those little things that people do. Because, you know, people were quoting things in, um, you know, Ghostbusters when they were happening or um, in Killer Clown just being excited, you know, when they got, saw the dude doing the clown doing the... Um, wall puppets or um, or shadow puppets, I'm sorry. Or like just all those different scenes. So I think he could have played into that just a little bit more. Right. What about you, Tony? Uh, yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. As, again, this is, uh, and I think I can speak for all of us in this panel right now, is that this is a movie that we've all never seen. Um, Tales from the Crypt obviously is a famous series uh, based around like horror-based uh, comics, which is really cool. Um, so me being both a horror fan and a comic book fan, like this is right up my alley. Uh, I really like the the premise of the movie. It really, really, I'm really going to give this movie a watch now. Even I know Logan has been suggesting it a lot as well, and I wish Logan could be on this panel because I think uh, he, he can give us some, a little bit more info about uh, what this movie's about and, and the whole thing and, and maybe give further thoughts of what he thinks about this. But um, nonetheless, I, I think from what we got is really cool. Um, I'm already a fan of the, uh, the whole punching scene. I think that's a really cool, strong opening. The minute you walk into this hotel... Like, that's one of the first things you see. That's, like, on some, like, exorcist-level shit, like, right there. Like, in, in the exorcist maze, like, the first thing you walk when you walk into that maze is the first thing you see is her doing the spider walk down the stairs. Like, that was insane. Um, so I think that's going to be a cool effect, especially if they take a book out of the first Purge. If anybody went through that, in Hollywood at least, there was a scene where the guy uh, sliced the girl's throat and the water effect uh, uh, sprayed out at you, like, if you it was blood coming on you, which was a really cool effect. About the only thing good about that maze. Um... But nonetheless, uh, uh, no, I, I think his transition rooms, like going through the caves and stuff of this hotel and everything, is really cool. I mean, as you see, it seems like as you go through more and more of this hotel, you start uncovering more of a dark history of it, a dark past, if you will. And um, I, I really like the the whole uh, the demons. I love the way the demons look. By the way, I think uh, Universal can do an amazing job bringing this to life, especially if they include like the green lights and everything. That can be freaking solid, in my opinion. 
if they were to do that. But uh, I, I, I would see that being really a really cool effect. Not only that, but the other prosthetics of the demons, like they've done a really good job in the past with the Insidious demons. So I have a, a really strong uh, feeling that they can do an amazing job with these demons as well. But I, I really like that whole rumor where they're all getting attacked and everybody's getting ripped apart and everything. And then when she when she spits the blood on his face, that could be a really cool effect for like you see him as a regular person, then he comes out as like a whole different like person that's all transformed. That would be really cool. Um, and the final scare is really cool. Um, much like how Sammy said, I think that uh, with this treatment that we got, it felt very short. Um, I like I said, I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know if there was more he could have added or if those were all the main scenes that are like really worthy enough of being in the maze so i have to really give the movie a watch but it felt a little short to me it felt the, the maze flow through kind of felt a little rushed but i think what zombie chris did with this with what he had uh was very solid and of course not only that of course you guys all know i'm suckers for the for the trailers the trailer made me really want to go through this um, we've seen some great trailers in the past with uh, scream uh it um of course now uh, zombie chris with this one I feel like I'm missing one. I think someone else did one. But nonetheless, uh, great, great pitch, Chris. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, man. Uh, all right. Going on. Wait, hold on. Before we go, I got one more comment. You mentioned those demons with the glowing eyes. Right. I really feel like Universal Hollywood should play to their strength there and put just enough, just nothing but black walls. There you go. Um, we just and have those demons with the lights. Uh, with just their coming out of the glowing. walls, you see the green. Yeah. It'd be perfect. It really plays into their strength. Really. I think you could also reuse those tunnels from um, House of Thousand Corpses, though, where you're in, like, the Yes. Tree, and then have some of the strings and whatnot. I think the green, like, glowing stuff really adds another layer, kind of. Right. You're talking about the tunnels that go to Dr. Satan, right? That's right. Yeah. I, I was kind of thinking about that, too, when there's that one scene where they look like they were in those kind of tunnels, like catacomb-like things. So, yeah, they can definitely reuse those. Um, all right, Connor next is doing an original maze based around a scare zone that was at Universal Studios Orlando Halloween Horror Nights uh, based around aliens. Uh, this one's kind of got me really stoked. I'm a huge fan of aliens, and I've seen that scare zone firsthand. They had an actual like life-size UFO and everything, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what Connor has to bring to the table. Uh, so without further ado, Connor, take it away. Hey, guys. So I am here to pitch my maze treatment for this really cool competition. I think this is a really cool idea. Get the creative juices flowing. And yeah, here's what I got. So I am going to be doing an original maze treatment, uh, but not fully original. Uh, it's gonna be based off of the 2017 HHN Orlando Scare Zone invasion. Throughout the video, I'll be putting pictures in. So uh, for those of you who haven't seen the zone, you kind of get an idea of what some of the alien characters look like. But yeah, this was a zone here in Orlando in HHN 27, and it was in the San Francisco area. Really cool zone. I really liked the characters, the interactions. Only problem was it was kind of a small space, but I'm going to be treating a house for it, and I'm going to have this obviously treated for HHN Orlando. I'm going to have this put in the old parade warehouse. So uh, this was home to Graveyard Games, Trick or Treat, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Those were the the last three houses in that location. So on the outside of the parade building, sometimes they'll have a little scene. Most notably in 2017, there was kind of a car for the Ash vs. Evil Dead maze. And so there's plenty of space there for a big prop. And that is where the crashed alien UFO is gonna go. Now, this was a street prop that they used in 2017. And I thought it was one of like the coolest things I've ever seen. I, I just thought it was super sick. So we're going to bring back the exact same prop as a callback uh, for all of those 2017 fans. And it also draws some inspiration from the film Mars Attacks, mostly in terms of the music, uh, kind of that synthy alien type of music. That'll be the kind of the tone, especially in the beginning of the maze as you're getting introduced to what's happening. And then as the maze goes along, the music will kind of get a little more serious or almost like sinister because this maze is going to be basically in three parts. It's going to start off in the town where the aliens are invading. Then you're going to find yourself on the alien's actual spaceship. And finally, you'll end the maze on the alien's home planet. Also, something I'm going to do when I'm talking about each section of the maze. So, like I said, there's going to be three sections. I'm going to play kind of a rough idea of what the music would be like in that section in the background. So... 
Hopefully that'll help transport you into the world that I'm trying to create. The town is gonna be lots of like contrast, green grass, bright colored houses, almost think like the neighborhood from Edward Scissorhands. Um, so it's this really bright, inviting looking neighborhood. And throughout this first section of the maze, uh, when, when you first walk into the parade building, uh, you'll be on the city street, you'll see houses and you'll see a lot of um, kind of scripted scenes, uh, not as much on the jump scares at this point, but you'll kind of see the aliens tormenting different residents of the town. There will be a lot of funny moments at this point because it is, you know, kind of that 50s sci-fi alien vibe. So obviously you can't really do it without having some comedy. And uh, I think it, it would make the maze a lot better with this particular genre. It, it's gotta have some humor to it. So you're kind of getting introduced at this point to all the different alien weaponry. You know, you're seeing them chasing after someone with a probe. You are seeing their like disintegrator rays. Uh, you're seeing all of the, the crazy alien tech. You're seeing little red blasts of light off in the distance that kind of symbolize the, the lasers coming from UFOs. And that, that'll be the first little bit. So then you're gonna turn a corner and you're gonna see this really bright light. And uh, this is an effect that they used in the Poltergeist house in 2018, where they kind of were symbolizing you walking into the light from Poltergeist, except this is going to represent you being abducted by the aliens. And this is where you end up on their ship. Now, this will actually be the shortest section of the maze, only about three rooms, but when you first go in, you'll you'll turn the corner and you'll see a room with a lot of scare actors and they're kind of popping out at you, but mostly they're just kind of observing you because to them, you're the alien really. So they're kind of confused as to what you are. So they're gonna pop out from around the corner, kind of like examine you a little bit and then go back in. Then you'll turn another corner and this is where you get your big show-stopping scene. You'll see aliens on either side of you. Some will be mannequins, some will be real aliens, and from time to time, the real alien will, you know, lunge at the guests. And up on an elevated platform, kind of above where the next room is gonna be, you will see kind of the king alien. Think Clownzilla from uh, last year in Orlando's Maze. Um, you'll see a big, kind of alien overlord. Yeah, he, he's there, you, you get to see him in all his glory, and it's definitely the big show-stopping moment of the maze. In terms of his looks, uh, basically, if you remember, um, and I'll put the picture here again, but this alien, basically like a really jumbo-sized version of this alien with, you know, some additional features, I guess you could say. Uh, maybe like more spikes coming out of his head, so he's a little more distinguishable. So then in the next room, you'll be making your escape from the spaceship. So there will be sirens going off because you've triggered the escape alarms and you will see another light. It turns out, unfortunately, your escape didn't quite go as planned because you're not back on Earth when you escape. You are on the alien's planet. Now, this is where the maze is gonna get very hostile because the aliens are mad because you tried to escape, you tried to defy them. You didn't cooperate with their experiments. So you're gonna be on the planet and it's gonna be nothing like Earth. It'll kind of feel very toxic, I guess you could say. Lots of uh, green and purple in there. You'll see like little pools of, of acid type material. And in, in this part of the maze, it'll be very built because their planet is, is gonna be kind of mountainous and uh, rocky, I guess you could say. It's just that the landscape is not earthly. And this part, while it will be built tall, will have a lot of confined spaces. Uh, you'll have to be going through a cave to try and hide out, but obviously that doesn't go to plan because there's gonna be plenty of aliens in there who saw right through you and are ready to attack. Scares coming from all angles, aliens reaching down at you from above. You're gonna see them popping out right up to you on the sides and they definitely aren't examining you anymore like they were on the spaceship. It's just all about intimidation at this point. So the maze is going to end with not a whole lot of hope. The idea here is you, you turn the final corner after you've been attacked by all these aliens and you see kind of an escape pod looking thing and it's got NASA logo on it. So it's like, oh, thank goodness, you know, 
they've managed to, to follow these aliens back to their home planet and they're going to rescue us. And uh, the, the window on this shuttle is going to be kind of blacked out. Then you'll see a, a strobe light go off and you'll see the silhouette of an alien killing the astronaut. And that, that's how it's going to end. It's, it's a bleak ending, but at least it is an ending. Instead of just an abrupt ending, you, you kind of get a little something. So that's what I've got for my invasion maze idea. Uh, I've always been a huge fan of the genre. I love the, the kind of corny comedy sci-fi aliens. So when The Zone came to 27, I was really stoked, but it did leave me wanting more. And I just think it's such a cool concept for a house and I just want it to be overloaded with aliens and kind of told in, in three different parts. It's kind of like you're going through a, a sci-fi movie, you know? You have an act one, an act two, and an act three, and then you have your ending, which is kind of a, a cinematic ending almost. So yeah, that's what I've got. I, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, all the photos I used came from the HHN wiki. Got all my photos from there, so yeah. Um, if you want to see any more photos of the zone, there are there are some on the on the site. And yeah, thank you for listening. Wow, that was a very well detailed maze by Mr. Connor, man. That was that was really good. I am a huge fan of like the genre of aliens and stuff. So, uh, Sammy, why don't you take it away? What, what were your thoughts about this this maze in particular? Yeah, that was a. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Connor, for taking the time to submit this today um i really enjoyed how he took the time to make it in three acts you know the our planet the ship and then their planet and what they're ending um i really loved the detail i really felt like i was just listening to connor kind of tell us his story about how we're just basically on this planet watching um you know obviously the, i like the outside of the building to, to begin with the whole crash ship thing um and how like we kind of get right into kind of just like seeing these aliens kind of terrorizing our planet in a very comical way. Right. Um, um, and then kind of being abducted, it kind of reminded me of um, during Origins at Knots of when the green light was coming down and we were actually becoming monsters as we were leaving. Right. Um, and so like I could definitely picture that, like walking down a, a nicely, not super long hallway, but a, a nice lengthy hallway where, the lights coming down on you maybe like a green light coming and you're getting transported to the ship and then and then it kind of t reminded me of once again at uh, not um what's the name of the maze the one behind uh you know maze i'm talking about what's his name uh the alien one at not oh dark entities dark entities kind of remind me of dark entities where like i can kind of picture us going through a ship like that where but less a little bit less sinister because he said like they're not going to be really threatening you. They're kind of just more examining you and kind of seeing what's going on. Um, and then the idea that you like come when you escape, like there's a hope in obviously escaping, but instead of escaping to what you would think is safety, you get worse into the story. Um, and I like the, I like how he contrasted it was like, it wouldn't be earthy, but it would be mountainous, but like he used greens and purples, yeah, which I thought was a very interesting choice. Because, like, I was immediately thinking, oh, we're going to be seeing Browns. Um, when he said that we were going to go onto their planet. And so he changed it to me. Changed, you know, pulled a, he said, you activated my trap card. Um, and changes the greens and purples. This guy's, this guy's throwing out some Yu-Gi-Oh references over here. Bro, bro, it's always time to duel, bro. <laughs> bro, come on, Kaiba. Um, and, uh, and then his ending was cool, too. Because I like, like I, I agree that sometimes... Mazes kind of feel a little abrupt at the end. Right. But the fact that he kind of, like, once again, he has a story in threes and has an ending with, like, there's that hope that you see the ship and then the strobe. Once again, reminds me of the ending on Paranormal Inc. Right. Um, where the, you got that strobe effect and you see, like, the monster. Yeah. But you'll see, like, it's, you'll see, like, the alien going through, um, you know, the chilling astronaut. And then, yeah, yeah, he used Count Clownzilla, I'm sure, got you excited because i know you have your undying love tony for killer clowns but it was so. it was different i mean i like the whole i mean because if you look back at avp though at, at at hhn they did the same concept where they had the giant alien at the end which looked badass um so but i like how he put it in the middle right like he put it in the middle so then there's still like more to go which is super sick i i really enjoyed that so thanks so much connor right uh will go for it 
Um, yeah, I mean, I really, I really like that uh, that structure again. The three different like sections of the maze because I feel like a lot of times the horror nights, you know, kind of feel like a little bit uh, like you're going through the same thing the whole entire maze. But uh, he really like mixed it up and um, like yeah, it was a it was a nice like storyline and it wasn't just kind of like following the beats of like a movie, but he really crafted his own like world there. For, and I really thought that the uh, uh, the idea of starting out in that like 50s like suburb with like uh, with those like super bright colors and whatnot at the beginning and having it start out like you know like uh, not not super serious but like you know kind of funny and scary at the same time was uh, really a great idea and um, I really enjoyed all the different sections I, I like that uh, you know just at the end of like you're already on the planet and there's like no escaping. And uh, I thought he brought a really nice, interesting structure that uh, I hadn't really seen before. So. Right. No, I agree. Uh, very good uh, storytelling. Uh, he, I'm going to give him the, you know, the pass of the visual for this one, only because you know, there's not very much he can uh, you know, really show from previous years, of, of course, with this. This is an original. Um, I want to say this is the first original, right, of the, of the, of the tournament? Is this like- the first? Like based off a of scare zone or something. I think this is. Spirits and demons. Spirits and demons. No one did spirits. And... Oh. Yeah, so it was episode one. My episode friend. one. It was baby metal. That's right. Um, so yeah, I, I really like the the approach that Connor took with this. Like much how Sammy said, it's a three parter. You know, you got your first act, your second act, and your final act to finish it all off. Much like a movie, how it is. Um, and that was really cool. I really liked the whole uh, opening of having the spaceship crashed right there. So it's kind of setting you up to like this story of, okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna investigate what's going on in the world, and then you know you, you start going, you start seeing the alien invasion, and then you get abducted, which is awesome. Going into the to the mothership and all that, and and seeing all these aliens just stare at you, just gives you that weird feeling of like, you don't know what the hell is going on. You don't know what's gonna happen next. Are they gonna kill me? Are they gonna? What are they gonna do? Um, which puts you into that panic mode of now I have to escape this place. Uh, and I like how he also tied in that you can go to different parts of the ship. Uh, he said there were three rooms that were going to be based around the ship. One of them, of course, showed the Queen Alien, which I think was really cool. Uh, the Clownzilla thing that he kind of said was a, a really cool thing, a, a visual of how he wanted that alien to look. Um, that Clownzilla was massive over there in Orlando. And if you guys remember in Hollywood, we had a massive Queen Alien for AVP, which was actually a really cool part of that maze, in my opinion. Um, it just looked badass. And if you guys are fans of that franchise, I mean, it, it was really cool to see come to life. So we've seen giant props like that in the past that, that can work. And I, and I really think that if he made that, that, that alien like how he showed in the scare zone, but a little bit more you know, with spikes and, and just a little bit more scarier, um, it would be a really dope scare. And then I, I do like the whole idea of going on to their planet. Um, you know, with with a lot of alien uh, origins and stuff, you never really get to hear too much about their planet. So this one is taking you from Earth to their ship to their planet. So basically throughout the entire time you're on the ship, you're traveling to their planet, which I think is really cool. Going to their planet, it's giving me them uh, kind of Rick and Morty vibes. I don't know if you guys know the colors that they use in that show. But when he was saying like the purples and the greens and stuff, I was really thinking about how like, they use that that kind of color base on Rick and Morty. So I was thinking. Can we hear a Rick and Morty impression? What, what do you who do you want to hear, Rick or Morty? Bro, can you know those does, bro. Okay. Uh, GG, I don't know, I don't know, Rick. This is this is good. This, this is not good, Rick. Uh, shut up, Morty. That that's not good, Morty. Just, just sh- shut up. Um, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> Any, uh, anyway, uh, but that that I think it's cool to go on their planet, and then you have that false hope ending of okay, we have a pod, we're getting the hell out of here, and then that flash of that silhouette of an alien killing the astronaut to rescue you, just that that's your that's it, it's over, and that's just kind of your ending. So basically, it's like you're either trapped on this planet for life, or you gotta you're gonna die, one or the other. Uh, if you if you're smart, you'll you'll grab some weapons and and uh, and go from there. And my and, and this is what I was thinking. It kind of sets it up for a sequel if they ever wanted to do one. Uh, Connor kind of left it open for a sequel because you don't necessarily know what happens to you after that whole scene with the astronaut. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I'm stuck on this planet. Am I gonna go fight back? What what's gonna happen? Am I gonna explore more of the planet? Like it leaves a whole other storyline to see where they can go as far as um, looking at the planet. So that's really cool. But Nonetheless, Connor, a great job. 
Now this is going to be the hard part because this is a this has been just something that's been happening all tournament. This is the the moment of truth who we who we decide um, gets to advance on to round two. Now these were both very solid treatments. I really enjoyed them a lot. I think Tales from the Crypt really works, and I love the invasion storyline. Um, and this is a very hard decision for me, but I'm gonna let Will go first. All right. <laughs> what is this American Idol? <laughs> and we're gonna take our commercial break. Commercial break. <laughs> After this commercial break. Um, man, I think these are both really solid. Um, uh, Chris really had me sold with, uh, you know, coming from like the HHN Hollywood background. I think that his property like really fit what like was and i really love his ideas for like effects and scares and how the whole uh thing was laid out and you know like those replacements for the black walls we get with the caves and the you know adding some like interest with the glowing green masks and whatnot um and uh connor with the um aliens that that was just that was really incredible like story-wise and building this uh, environment that you could really feel immersed in um, with the you know three acts and this would definitely be one of the longer mazes probably in the sound stage with you know the massive props and just really going like balls to the wall with budget and like um, and crazy effects and uh, so I think in the end I'm gonna have to go with uh, invasion as the, the as the winner. Ooh, that was out of, that was a curveball right there for me. That was a curveball for me, Will. Ooh, I wasn't anticipating that one either. I wasn't. I was not. You want me to go next, Tony? Yeah, you go next. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Will here with um, this idea that you know Chris really brought the visuals in my opinion. You know, he brought his trailer. He brought us um, you know different clips from the movie and really edited a really pretty picture for us. And so. Where he didn't have detail, his visuals made up. Right. Whereas I think Connor really was like, here, I'll give you a few pictures, you know what I mean? I'll give you the crash site. I'll give you a few aliens that were already in the zone. But then he just told us a story and kind of let our, imagines run, let our imagination run wild by giving us details but not filling in every detail. So I thought that was really fun. Um, and um, as you guys probably know on the channel, if you've been – a long time follower is that I, I love nods. And so like, I really felt like he took a lot of the things I really enjoyed from nods and kind of combined them into this maze. Um, and Chris really brought some of these like really like horror night ass things a lot to life. Like from like that I got to experience with like clownzilla, uh, like the clownzilla mother, queen Mary, queen, what did I say? Queen Mary, the queen. I don't know why you said queen um, Mary. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> queen of the, uh, sh the queen of the ship. That's why. Just kidding. There you go. Mother. Yeah. Um, and these other cool things. But I'm going to go with Invasion uh, myself here because um, I really just, I love his storytelling. Um, and he's one of the first people to talk about music, um, which is I'm a sucker for this right. idea of I didn't explain. I forgot to say it earlier, but this idea of it kind of being a little bit more whimsical and playful in the beginning. But it gets more sinister as you transition towards the end of the maze. So not only did his story do that. The idea that he has his music doing that too was really cool. So at this point, it doesn't even matter who I decide. I mean, Connor took the took the victory on this one, but I, I will go ahead and give my my senses anyway. Uh, I really liked Chris's Tales from the Crypt. I think it works. I think it's a great, uh, and it makes me now really want to watch this movie. And Logan was really telling us that we should watch this movie, and I definitely am gonna watch it. And it's ironic because you know, literally like two nights ago, I'm looking through Voodoo and. You know, I'm looking at deals, seven ninety nine. There's, de you know, Tales from the Crypt, Demon Tale. I'm like, oh shit, that's the next thing we're gonna be talking about. So, you know, it looks like it's kind of meant to be. Um, and I really love the detail he put into this. The trailer was great. Um, you know, I, I think this would work. I think this would be a solid maze in HHN. I think it'd honestly be a fan favorite at HHN. Uh, if if people were fans of Creep Show, I think this can take that to the next level with Tales from the Crypt. However, Connor brought it with a story. Um, yes, he didn't show a lot of visuals. But if you have a very good, solid story to the pitch, nine out of ten times you're gonna you're gonna catch someone who's actually gonna pay attention to your to your pitch and really hear what you have to say. Uh, so Connor, my friend, uh, 
you had me sold with Aliens. You had me sold when you made references to Mars Attacks, which I loved. One of my favorite Alien movies of all time. Such a great comedy. Um, and you're using that kind of style of mixing with that, like, the horror aspect, but you want to introduce that little dark comedy into it, which I really think is cool. Uh, I'm going to have to go Connor. Uh, Zombie Chris really brought it to the table with the, 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 the entire pitch he did. But I think overall, Connor sold me with the story he told. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed what he did with, with such little uh, things that he had. So, Connor, congratulations. You're going to be advancing to round two against TLEV's Ho Sway. I am excited to see that matchup. Let's see what you can bring to the table for the next round. Uh, that is it for round one. Oh, my God. I can't believe we got through round one. Now it's round two. It's going to start getting intense. These treatments are probably going to get even better going to the next round. You know, we got freaking... Uh, the hotline, John, he's going to bring it. I don't know what he's going to do yet, but with that first uh, Matrix uh, maze that he pitched, uh, I, I think he's going to pitch something good. But then you got him going up against Losh, who did a really good job selling us with the Scream franchise, uh, you know, from movie to movie to the facade and everything, the trailer and everything. Uh, so that's going to be a really good matchup. I'm really excited to see if Horn Nights and Scripted, you know, maybe work together to get this going now that they have that third member. Let's see if they work together and maybe get something going. Um, and, of course, now you got TLAV's Ho Sway versus uh, Connor. Now, this can one, work one of two ways. Is TLAV going to team up with Ho Sway to create the ultimate pitch? And is Chris going to team up with Connor to, to create a pitch as well? Uh, you know, you got, you got a lot of crews here going on. It looks like John's going in, uh, the one-man army. But we'll see what happens. So thank you guys so much. We return with Maze Treatments August 15th, 2020. Um, so stay tuned because it's about to get good in round two. We'll see you guys later.